leave your desk unattended. Just because you're a rookie doesn't mean that you're not going to get heckled every now and then. A friend of mine was in paramilitary affairs. This guy was just as tough as it gets. Uh, he had machine guns uh, in his front lawn, you name it. Uh, he would spit on the sidewalk and hair would grow from it. So we snuck in to his office and put up pink doilies and all the rest while he was gone. It was just a lovely tableau. He was horrified to see that. You also might consider using Vaseline. This can be a wonderful product. Uh, you can put it on a PC's power button. You can put it on file drawers. Uh, you can put it on seat buttons. You can put it on the handle of the refrigerator. Now just make sure that when you've done that, you also put it on whatever they're going to use to clean that stuff off with. It really works well. One of our analysts was particularly interested in some weird kind of Coca-Cola that he developed, and he'd bring in cans upon cans of this stuff, and he'd put it in the little refrigerator that we had for everyone, and everyone's saying, oh, I, I got no room for my stuff. What's going on here? So one of our folks would, each morning before the guy would show up, run in, grab one of the Coke cans at random, and shake it, and then put it back. Now, this was a time delay thing. You don't know when it's going to go off, but when you do, it does, it's going to be just wonderful. So you might try something like that. Another one that a friend of mine tried is he learned that one of his friends was going to go over to the National Security Agency up at Fort Meade for a while on what we call an extended uh, visit for about a year or so. He sneaks over to the guy's desk beforehand and he puts in the file drawer way in the back an old chicken leg and an egg and then time passes. You can imagine the smell that is now starting to waft into this guy's office and he eventually can't stand the smell anymore and he digs through all of his office and he finds the offending item and he figures out who this guy was and he calls him and he says, I can't believe you, SOB, you did this. And the guy says, wait, wait, just tell me the answer to one question, which came first, the chicken or the egg? <laughs> love the beauty of them setting that thing up. Security officers are often telling us, you know, you got to make sure that you make sure that the computer screen has been logged off before you leave because people are always going to be doing awful things to you. Uh, you might have something like that as well where you just pop up something. Among things that people have discovered when they come back from not having locked their computer screens, on boot up the sound card plays the When Harry Met Sally orgasm at really loud levels. It can really throw off your office. On boot up, the terminal displays the message, so just what do you think you're doing? Got to worry about that. A terminal had been used to be sending faked messages uh, to someone of the opposite sex, and people were doing this for a while. Eventually the couple got together, nothing much came of it, but it was still a charming thing to try. Someone had changed the S command from save to send. You don't want that happening to you, bad things can happen. <laughs> One of our nearsighted branch chiefs had returned to his office and he discovered some unidentified item had been placed on his office wall clock just really out of his reach and kind of out of his sight. And he asked people, so what is this? And they said, well, it's a motion detector. And that Twinkie stayed up there for years. It was really cool. I don't think I had thanked uh, the friendly folks from the Spy Museum. Uh, Peter Ernst is back there along uh, with Allison Bishop. And it's uh, time for the moment uh, for us to give you an ad for Spy Museum stuff. As a lot of you have probably have been wondering, so, can I use spy stuff in my daily life? Well, yes, indeed you can. I've got stuff here to prove that you can. One of the things that you might have is, how many of you have had to allow the electrician to come in to fix your house, or the plumber or whatever, and they'll give you, oh, you know, I'll be there sometime between uh, 7 a.m. and maybe 8 tonight, and you're stuck at home. Or you can say, well, you know, I'll leave a key with you. Now, you don't want to leave a key under the mat, because 
every crook in the world knows that people leave the key under the mat, right? And all you do is just check. So instead what you might want to do is use something that we call a concealment device. Concealment devices, this is called a hide a key. You can get stuff like this in the spy museum. You just open the thing up, throw the key in, put it down, and then tell them, well, just look for this little shell. Now I don't have, like to use this particular shell because it's kind of attractive. And what if some four-year-old kid shows up and, oh God, they're going to steal it. So instead what you want to do is get stuff that kind of looks natural to the environment. So you can use, say, a Coke can. Now this looks like a regular Coke can, right? But you can open the thing and it's a concealment device again. It's a little hollowed out thing. So you stick, say, your valuables in it and you put it in the refrigerator and no one's going to be the wiser. However, if someone has come in and has decided to tear through your apartment, after a hard day of moving furniture around, it's Miller time. So these guys are going to go to your refrigerator. Uh, they don't have any drinks here, but at least I got Coke. Well, I can't open this. And eventually you're gonna find the stuff. So you don't want that. What instead you wanna think is like the bad guys. Guaranteed you, bad guys are not gonna clean up after themselves. So you put it in an Ajax thing like this. Or, again, you try to get something that looks like it belongs there. So you take an everyday candle. Now ma'am, would you uh, give me the sniff test on this? Feels like a candle? Right, smells like a candle? And probably burns like a candle, I'm not gonna destroy it. But again, you can pop this little thing off and behold, you got something like this. So you can get stuff like this at the spy museum. Or let's say that you want to try various disguises. And we got plenty of disguise stuff here. Uh, simple disguises, of course, is you can change your glasses, which you probably saw me doing earlier. You know, the dork look works for me pretty well, uh, but if you have kids who are into Potter, you can do that. Or you can try sunglasses. Ma'am, would you try these? And just tell me what you see by looking at the sides. I can see behind me. Hey, so pretty cool, right? So you might do something like that. Or, you know, you can try various hats as well. Of course, you can, you have to buy one of these things. You know, that changes my look a little bit. Now, if I wanted to change into, say, a Generation X looking guy, I might wear it like this. And if I want to become maybe Generation Y and throw off some of those pesky excess IQ points, I could do this. <laughs> I recently picked this one up from Lady Gaga. And that probably would work for her. And of course, you can go into other exotic hats. You know, you might try a beret like that, but we're always a little annoyed with them, so <laughs> maybe you don't want to use that. So all sorts of things like that you might want to try. Now sometimes you also want to find out what's going on with secret messages. So let's suppose that you've got an envelope like this, but you don't want people to know that you've broken into it. So you take absolutely the finest product I have ever seen in the Spy Museum or anywhere else, envelope x-ray spray. And you spray it on and you can read what's going on there, right? And you blow on it, and suddenly, message all gone. So they've got no idea. This is 200 proof alcohol, by the way, so if you guys have any other uses for alcohol, you're welcome to it. Other concealment devices, what you want to do is make sure that people aren't thinking this is spy stuff. You want to get stuff that people are not going to naturally pick up. So you might take a book that no one's going to read. This one is, without a doubt, by Marsha Clark. This was her view of the OJ trial. Guaranteed no one's going to grab this thing. <laughs> and, you know, just uh, to try a couple of pages out, you open the book and it says, this is painful, I don't even know where to begin. You know, that pretty much sums up the book for me. <laughs> but if you were in the Boy Scouts, you learned that you can glue all of the pages of a book together and then you can hollow it out. And behold, that's what you can do with this thing. And what do you find? But of course, your cool spy stuff is hidden in here. So you might try to do something like that. Or what you might try is 
sometimes you're going to have to offer somebody a message, a secret message. You grab your good old disappearing ink stuff and you write your little message out. And you can't see all that all that well, right? But if the 60s were good to you, you might still have one of these things. And behold, that thing's just jumping out at you all of a sudden, right? So you can use something like that. Now surveillance, of course, is going to get wise to you eventually. And you're going to see them coming at you. So what you do is you rip it up. And you stuff it in any good old water. And how many of you out there are James Bond fans? Hey, a few of you, right? Okay, how do you make a martini? Shake and not stirred, right? Come on, say it with me, I know you want to. Okay, shake and not stirred. Boy, this audience participation thing is working out well for you. <laughs> and message all gone. And then just to establish the surveillance, who's in charge? In case you're wondering, tastes like chicken. <laughs> so that and tons of other stuff you can get from the spy museum. So make sure that you go next door when you're done here. And of course, want to also make sure that you get the bottom line of what I've got in mind here. If you don't buy my book, the terrorists win. <laughs> I was in public affairs for a while. I used to like to play practical jokes on members of the media. We're not allowed to have cell phones with us, but nonetheless, some of the rookies in the media didn't know that. So we'd be walking along, and I'd palm what would look like a cell phone, and I'd say, so, we caught Bin Laden, huh? That's great. And then watch this guy frantically try to get near a phone so he could get this great new story. I was on foot surveillance for a while, learning how to uh, chase people around. And you want to not be all that interesting to people. When the director talked to my rookie class, he said, you know, the most important thing for any case officer is to not get the eye of waiters. And I'll tell you, our family has never eaten terribly well in Washington because of that. I can never get their attention. But, Sometimes it works out well when you're surveillant. So I was paired with a particularly flashy blonde who was supposed to be my wife during our runs. And at the end of it, the people that we were chasing had made her and didn't notice that she was with a guy at all. So I was doing okay on this. I was really <laughs> pleased. She wasn't particularly adept at doing this, however. You wear things like these little lavalier mics around you uh, we would used to wear these big things and eventually the batteries would blow out on you so you'd have to change. So she went to the women's room to change into uh, her new version of the batteries and of uh, the microphone hookup. And she decided to test the thing while she was sitting in there. She says, okay guys, uh, I think the rabbits are not near me. Of course, the people that we're chasing are sitting right next to her in the stall next to her. So they made her easily <laughs> enough. Other things can happen to you when you're on surveillance. You have to make sure that you know the area that you're going to be working in. A lot of times, you're not going to be able to meet someone, so you have to leave a message clandestinely for someone. And you want to make sure that you know who you're dealing with. A friend of mine was going to be meeting an agent named Pat. And unfortunately, this worked out pretty much like the Saturday Night Live character named Pat. The guy said, okay, I will leave the message in the men's room for you. Of course, Pat was a woman. Dang it. Another guy, happily this was just in our training, so we want you to screw up when you're in training. We don't want you to follow up on the outside. So that was fine. Alan Dulles tells a story uh, before he was director of doing the same thing. He had said, I'll leave a message in this particular little building and he leaves the message and walks off. And wouldn't you know it, the building was demolished right before the agent got there. So you gotta make sure that you're not gonna have things like that happen to you. 
we're really into foreign languages, and I'm not terribly ad 